welcome to the history of Microsoft. The year was 1981. John Lennon and Yoko Ono won a Grammy for Best Album with Double Fantasy. The top grossing film was Raiders of the Lost Ark with $115 million. And Ronald Reagan took the oath as the 40th President of the United States of America. And for Microsoft, 1981 would prove to be a stellar year filled with enormous growth. On April 9, 1981, Microsoft holds the first semi-annual company meeting in the newly built Bellevue Athletic Club. And a few months later, on June 25th, Microsoft reorganizes into a privately held corporation, with Bill Gates as president and chairman of the board and Paul Allen as executive vice president. Microsoft becomes Microsoft Incorporated, an incorporated business in the state of Washington. But Microsoft isn't the only company making strides in the tech industry. Osborne Computer introduces the Osborne One. It's the first portable microcomputer. And in world news, Pope John Paul II is wounded by a gunman. And on May 2nd, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control published a report which officially announces the start of the AIDS epidemic. On August 12, 1981, IBM introduces its personal computer, MS-DOS version 1.0 plus BASIC, COBOL, PASCAL, and other Microsoft products. This is Microsoft's entry into the operating systems business. Included in the IBM compatible list of software is a game newly adapted to the PC. It's called Microsoft Adventure. How easy was it to get information on what was coming ahead? Were people open in those days or were they pretty secretive? Well, there was no, no secrecy at all, at least as far as I could detect. Uh, some of the computer shows like the West Coast Computer Fair, everybody in the industry would be there and sit down and there was so much to do we weren't we were overlapping each other some and there was some good rivalry but uh, not uh, in a sense that people were keeping lots of secrets about what they were up to and you know it was a very exciting uh, business at that time Intel was a customer for our basic they'd come out and asked us to to do some custom work and I remember telling them I could do it in two weeks, and they said, don't say that, don't say that. Say, say four months, say something reasonable. And it turned out it took four weeks to do, because actually configuring their system was so hard. But uh, we'd gotten to know Intel, and we're talking about where the uh, uh, chips were going. It just, it was a very small group that sort of shared this secret. In fact, Ted Nelson gave a speech at one of the West Coast computer fairs about how we were going to overthrow all the big computer companies and we really knew that it was power to the individual and uh, there was a little bit of a um, you know kind of a minority feel that we we had to uh, advance this cause and eventually everybody would realize we were right about what was going on with these machines on October 1st 1981 Microsoft continues to expand and the Microsoft building the Northup building, located on Northup Way in Bellevue, Washington, is leased. And this move proved to be a creative one as well. Rumor has it that at one point, a programmer would name a portion of his Windows code after the drive-in restaurant Burger Master, which could easily be seen from the new Northup location, as it was the first thing he saw when he looked out of his window. As Microsoft rolled into the holidays, it announced it assigned a letter of intent to enter a second source agreement with Santa Cruz Operation Incorporated for the Xenix operating system. The year 1981 ended with sales totaling over $17 million for Microsoft. And Microsoft saw the hire of some notable employees, including Jeff Rakes, Tandy Trower, Chris Peters, and the 100th employee, Ellen Acock. Reaching 100 employees is a milestone for any company, but for Microsoft, things are about to get much, much bigger.